Shalom, Shalom. Kohala, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone were well. And salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushed the word in truth and in sincerity. This is Ira from Great Millstone, Wisconsin. And just wanted to go into a topic of, uh, you know, attending to the Lord without distraction. You know, because now in the times that we are in, the demons are getting stronger and stronger, you know, which means that. You know, we have to, you know, make our faith stronger and stronger through prayer and fasting, you know, and being diligent, you know, to protect us from from the wiles of this of Satan, you know. Because the thing is, there's more distractions now more than ever, man. There's more distractions now than there was five years ago. You know, there's more distractions now than there was 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know. And it seems like every day the distractions are getting uh, are increasing, you know? So I just wanted to, you know, give brothers a faith boost through the spirit and, uh, give brothers some tools to combat this, the distractions that we see in our everyday lives that are becoming more and more of a nuisance. You know, this is, uh, first Corinthians chapter seven, verse 34. It says in this, I speak for your own profit, mm -hmm. not that I may cast a snare upon you, meaning a trap, but for that, which is calmly, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction, you know. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to go into the word distraction in the Greek here. Strong's G 563. Aperistastos. Aperistastos. I'm going into the Strong's, uh, Strong's definition here. It says, as a negative partic participle. And a presumed derivative of G4049 says, undistractedly, an example free from domestic solicitude without distraction. And solicitude is, um, you know, being wanton, you know. Uh, for example, you might see a sign on a gas station that says no soliciting, meaning, you know, uh, no hanging out, no being, no being wanton in front of the store, you know. So we are to attend to the most high without distraction. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of the most high? So now what, what's happening now is Paul is giving you a uh, synopsis of things that can distract you or separate you, you know, meaning pull you away from the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, in this world. It says, who shall separate us from the love of the most high? Salakia. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Salakia. Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, you know? So the, now you're starting to fall on hard times, right? So it's still the things that we're going through in our personal lives separate us from, from the Lord, or, fan, or famine, you know, hunger, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, you know? Because the rest of the world views us as such, you know, we're sheep in the midst of wolves, you know, and we're preyed upon, especially the prophets of the Lord, because the prophets in the middle of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua are meek, you know. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we can conquer these things, you know, we can conquer tribulation, distress and persecution and famine and nakedness and perils, you know, and even even the sword, man, women, you know. And that's the number one distraction, man. But we can overcome all these things through the spirit of the Lord. You know, all it takes is prayer, fasting and diligence, man. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Now, I want to go into this word persuaded because it's powerful. Strong's G 3982. Pytho. Pytho. So the Greek word is pytho. It says a primary verb to convince by argument, true or false, by analogy, to pacify or conciliate by other fair means, reflexively or passively, to assent, evidence or authority, to rely, agree, assure, believe, have confidence. You know, in the scriptures say cast, cast away, not, that, not your confidence in the Lord, man. Be conflint. Make friend, obey, 
persuade, trust, yield, you know? So Paul said he is persuaded, man. And this is, that's what we have to be. We have to be persuaded, you know? Let scripture say, let every man be persuaded in his own, in his own mind, you know, meaning agreeing, you know? So I'll read it again. Romans 8 and 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come so he doesn't let the let the past present or future distract him from the lord man you know he said look i don't care about angels i don't care about death i don't care about you know the things going on in life you know i don't care about uh powers and principalities meaning the uh, government officials and you know any of that man nor height nor depth nor any other creature you know so when I, and when I think of height or no height nor death, I think of, um, you know, uh, torture tactics. You know, I think of, you know, uh, government officials hanging us over mountains or hanging us from 15 story buildings and, you know, telling us to renounce the Lord, man, or we're going to they're going to drop us to the to the ground. You know, that's just what I think about when I read this, you know. So he said basically what Paul is saying here is that he's not he's not going for anything else in this world. You know, that's trying to persuade, dissuade him from the Lord, man. It says, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of the Most High, you know, which is in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. And it said, nor creature, man, you know, and that's anything on the earth. Everything on the, on the earth that lives is a creature, you know. And again, I think about us being threatened with, with animals, man, with, with hungry lions and dogs and things of that nature, man, you know. He said none of that is going to dissuade him from the Lord, man, because he is fully persuaded in his mind that of the love of Yahweh Bashem Shai, man, you know. And at this point, we should be too, man, you know. We should be too. And if we're not, we need some uh, serious evaluating, man, you know, because we are too close to the end of this thing to, uh, how do you say, to be teetering on a fence, you know, to not be persuaded. You know, to not put in the work because now we're in the home stretch, man. We're in the uh, anchor of the relay race, so to speak, you know, and in the anchor of the relay race, you know, that's that's time to go all out. This is second Peter chapter two, and I'm going to start at chapter. I'm sorry. Second Peter chapter one, verse two, and it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the most high and of Yahweh Shai, our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, which is truth, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. You see, so the Lord has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, man, even the promises of what the kingdom, man, you know, that. By these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, you know. And Paul just gave you some examples of the corruption, man, when he, you know, in uh, in Romans, you know, when he said, who shall separate us from the love of the most of um, who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai, you know. And so he gave you some examples of the corruption, man. It says. It says, verse 5, it says, and beside this, giving all diligence, you know. So we have, what well, means what? We have to work, man. You have to put our hands to the plow and keep our hands on the plow. Add to your faith virtue. So by giving diligence, by putting in the work, you add to your faith virtue, you add truth. Why? Because the truth is your actions show who you are, man, you know. And if your actions are about Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, then you will be seen as a man of the Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. It says, and to virtue, knowledge, you know, because you're going to increase in knowledge. The longer you do something, the more experience you have, the more you increase in the knowledge of that specific, specific and particular thing. It says, and to knowledge, temperance, you know, and temperance is a, a, a balance, man, you know. And to temperance, patience. 
You know, so now you have the ability to suffer because you've been through things. You have experience. And to patience, godliness, because we can't please the most high without patience, man. You know, just like it pleased the most high for how was I to suffer? It pleased the Lord for us to suffer, man. You know, what is the servant above his, the servant is not greatest, greater, greater above his master, man. So I'm going to read it again. It says, add to knowledge, temperance and to temperance, patience and patience, godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, charity, you know. So all these things work hand in hand. It says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall be neither be barren nor unfruitful in knowledge of the our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You know, because these are the things that you should be grateful for. These are the things that you should abound in because they were given to you freely from the Lord, man. You know, and if. Like scripture says, if you lack these things, then you're blind. You're not paying attention to what's going on or even giving heed to what the Lord has given you, man. Nor are you grateful. Verse 10, it says, wherefore, though rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. And why? Because we owe it to the Lord to give our diligence to him. For giving us this gift, we call well, that, 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 uh, this gift of faith, you know. It says, first, so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Mashiach. You know, so this is these are the keys to the kingdom, man. You know, this right here, this, these, these scriptures, are, this is this scripture, you know, and all these scriptures that have been read are the keys to the kingdom, man. You know, people, all, people on the outside always want to say, well, how, how do I get to heaven? How do I get to heaven? You know, how do I get saved? How do I get saved? Every secret is in the in the scriptures, man. You know, is Hebrews chapter six, verse 10. It says, for the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Which ye have showed toward his name and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And so the Lord isn't going to forget the work that you put in, man. You know, the Lord isn't going to going to forget you living your life for his sake. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence, there's that word again, to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So like the scriptures say, he that endureth to the end shall be saved, man. And what goes hand in hand with that? Working, you know, doing the work, man, being occupied in prophecies, you know. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises, you know. So we shouldn't be slothful, but we should be followers of them through faith. And who are the them? You know, our forefathers, man, Abraham, Noah, you know, Isaac, Jacob, you know, uh, uh, the, the prophets, Yahweh himself, man, you know, on down to the apostles and the elders, man, you know. Those they, they are our examples, man. It's like you. It's a. Uh, Oh, Satan's fucking Satan fuck with the phone so like you. This is second Ezra chapter 7 verse 35 verse 34 matter of fact verse 33 it says and the most high shall appear upon the seat of judgment and misery shall pass away and the long suffering shall have an end but yet judgment only shall remain truth shall stand and faith shall wax strong and the work shall follow and the reward shall be showed and the good deeds shall be a force and wicked deeds shall bear no rule you know, so the work will be showed and we're going to see the good deeds of the elect, man. When you, when you uh, read second Ezra, the, the second chapter, man, from the, uh, I believe, 39th, yeah, 39th verse on down, you know, the good works are shown and shown those who have done the good works toward the Lord, man, you know, and the wicked deeds aren't going to be allowed anymore because at this time, this is going to be the transition into the kingdom of heaven, you know. But in order to get to the kingdom of heaven, we have to attend to the Lord without distraction, man. You know, we have to be about our father's business. So with that, you know, I hope brothers were edified in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. I'm going to give all praises. Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and Elzegar Milson were well. And salutation to the Lord, 
I mean, salutations to the <laughs> salutations to the to the hopeful elect pushing the word all over the world in truth and sincerity. Shalom.